uh, we are organizing a feeding the soul event. We already organized it three times, and this is a red gathering. It's something that we do online, and uh, the idea is to interview some person uh, as you, just uh, asking one question, and uh, and the question is uh, what is the most important in your experience for the transformation of consciousness? Yes, this is a very good question. Shall I start? Yeah, we think we can start, yes. Okay. <clears throat> Hello everyone, this is Amit Goswami. I have been uh, asked a very, very important question by Professor Dr. Pierre Luigi. And um, I think it is, a, it is the most important question in anyone's life. What is it that you learn from your journey of transformation? What are the principles that you use or what are the um, ways that you live your life now? So I'll cover all that, try to cover all that uh, in the short time of this uh, answer. Uh, first of all, how I got motivated. You know, I was um, a scientific materialist when I started. And um, I did not think that um, people do talk about transformation, but I did not think that human beings can change. Um, in fact, this was a problem that my wife uh, Compartment be with because she was claiming that I um, uh, my talk about love is all about thinking, and I don't know how to feel love. Mm -hmm. And she talk about the heart, and I say, what is heart? There is no science behind the existence of any heart. It's all the brain, sweetheart, and you better live with it. So you have a constant, ongoing round. Now, what happened, of course, was that a while ago, I did have a, uh, an experience, which is that, you know, I used to go to give talks at conferences, and I always feel jealous when I heard other people giving talks which are good, which I thought better than me. And that jealousy energy was so prevalent. So this day, I really had it bad. Uh, like for hours, going into 1 a.m., even at a party, I could not let go of jealousy. And, you know, here I was a married man from Indian culture who usually do not care about looking at other women, and I usually didn't. But that night, I was so jealous of everyone that I was jealous of other men getting more attention from the women at the party. <laughs> So I got disgusted with myself at about 1 a.m. and went outside and suddenly this thought came to me, totally unexpected. Why do I live this way? And with it came a conviction, also totally unexpected, that I don't have to. I can do physics in a way that makes me happy. And uh, that is what uh, life is about, uh, doing, adjusting your profession, uh, in a way that is compatible with the way you want to live. And of course, it would be nice if that is also compatible with the way you want to think. But that came later. Uh, but I wanted to have some hold on why I was suffering from so much of negativity. And that really uh, produced a change. So when my wife challenged me about loving from the heart, I was arguing, but I was also quite um, curious. Is there such a thing as heart? Now, of course, the journey took me a very, very long time, but really, spiritual teachers are not uh, under-emphasizing uh, the importance of finding heart. The, uh, all my discoveries, uh, so long as I stayed with rational thinking, would not have been able to um, lift me up to where I am today unless uh, and until I open to emotions, especially emotions in the body, feelings in the body, finding the heart. Um, I was not getting anywhere much. 
I, of course, uh, could think the correct way and I could behave even better. But in my heart, I knew that I didn't know what love was. And then I understood vital energies. I started uh, going to some teachers and they taught me about chakras. And it just so happened that in the mid 80s, I also had the unique fortune of solving the quantum measurement problem. A science of consciousness was the result, no less. And that helped enormously in terms of the fact that finally my thinking and living and livelihood was becoming congruent. And so I was very curious, is there a scientific theory of feeling that one can make? And this new uh, quantum science of consciousness gave me an entry point because quantum science does say that material objects are possibilities for consciousness to choose from. And then one day it broke through my uh, thick skull that, uh, of course, it does not just have to be that matter is the only thing in the world besides consciousness. Why can't it also be that mind or feelings, these are legitimate non-material experiences? Of course, I was very scared of thinking this way, but I went to read some biology and I found that yes, biologists don't have any explanation of where our software come from. They blame everything on survival. But this is just not true. I was also aware of Maslow's concept of higher needs and I looked at my own life. I had to learn about the heart to find a good relationship with my wife who constantly claims that I don't love with my heart. So I had the higher need of finding what love is about. Otherwise, my talk about love or talk about oneness of consciousness were all just meaningless words. I became very aware of it and concerned about it. So when that um, idea broke through, that there is a way of talking about mind and vitality as non-physical energies, then uh, things, the whole journey, uh, became much more easy because now it was truly a journey of transformation. Before it was really more of a journey of uh, talking like an enlightened person or thinking like an enlightened person. Indeed, I was doing great in terms of talking to people who declared themselves to be enlightened and they were also, it turned out, that enlightened in the same sense that I was trying to be enlightened, they be enlightened in thinking. And this is what men's enlightenment most, mostly is, I found out. And it just wasn't enough. It doesn't transform you. However lofty you think, if you cannot relate to people with an expanded consciousness, what good is lofty thinking? That alone does not really help you feel or live the way. Because living depends on your feelings. Feeling is everything about living because that's where our indication of our software is. Software, feeling is the movement of our software, living software. I discovered this and then things became a lot easier. By that time, I also had a, a quantum theory of creativity. And I also knew that the Chinese are right. Uh, unless we really understand that creativity and conditioning had to be in balance, not only for thinking, which I was already practicing, but also for feeling. You know, it's not feeling in the traditional way, it's not enough. You have to bring in this in aspect of feeling, in aspect of vital energy, which is the creative aspect, which is the B aspect. Creativity the process makes it very clear. Do young, that active energy is just not enough. You have to settle with do be, do be, do be energy. The energy of being in energy is extremely important. So by that time, it was becoming better. And then uh, the breakthrough came. It, it, it this really, what can I tell you? It took 10 more years to really uh, find the heart. 
what helped enormously in the process is that I did um, have a wife who certainly constantly was coming up with challenges. And this time the challenge was that she had her own demands and I was getting old. And since I am already successful and old, and in the Indian tradition, when you are old, you prepare for death. What is there to look for so much of things anymore? She, on the other hand, was much younger than me, so she said, help me. I uh, am also talented, and you help my career. Of course, I, 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 I did that to a certain extent, but you know, it's very hard to know exactly what somebody else wants you to do. And uh, fights were more frequent than before, and so I became very concerned. How to love unconditionally? This is the question that I had never addressed before. I always thought that unconditional love is something that you dream about. How can one love unconditionally without imposing any condition whatsoever? And then I found a situation where I did need to discover unconditional love because uh, you know my body was getting old and I could not hold a marriage together with sexual energy alone. And so the challenge was very real. How do I love unconditionally? That plus the theoretical approach of, is there a basis for the heart chakra to have a self where we really feel the energies like a subject feeling an object? We do that with the brain. I already had a theory for that. But does the heart have the same uh, requisite necessary for achieving a self of the experience? And this question uh, depended crucially on what is the nature of the heart chakra. I was able to theorize a while before that it is not the physical heart, which is just a pump, but it is really the immune system. And the immune system's defense mechanism is the distinction of me and not me. This was an eye opener. So love, I realized, is when the distinction between me and not me goes away. And this love, although sexuality takes us there, but this love does not really depend on sexuality. So unconditional love is a love where I have the ability to include another person in my consciousness. It's an expanded consciousness depending on best if you can feel it in the heart. So things worked out in such a convenient synchronicity, you know, at once I had an inkling of how the self, how the heart gets a self, just like the brain, the requisites are there because the immune system is the second most complicated system in the body. It does not have that simplicity of just being a pump. How can it do something complicated like getting a self for itself? because consciousness has to identify with that particular organ. But immune system is the second most complex organ in the body. And indeed, people discovered that the immune system even has a little brain. That heart chakra has a little brain. Little, not so little, big bundle of nerves. Biggest bundle outside of the brain. So that was the missing straw, and I finally discovered that there is a self in the heart. In fact, the idea came while I was teaching in Italy. Uh, um, in Bologna, my friend uh, Giochino Pagliaro. Pagliaro, yeah, I know. Yes, yes, he used to organize these uh, workshops, and, and in one of these workshops, I was teaching people a meditation about love, and all of a sudden I realized, oh, this is how the heart gets a self, because there is a brain 
the requirement is satisfied. In the heart, there is a memory making capacity. So, um, and also at the same time, because I was doing practices which on the heart and they have become stronger because now the conviction was there that I should be able to experience the heart independent of the brain. And eventually I started doing these practices, assuming that I'm already doing it. And one day it broke through. I was having a fight with my wife. In the middle of the fight, I had the interesting thought that I should take a bathroom break and go to the bathroom, take a breath, and bring the energy to my heart like I used to practice in meditation. So I did it in the middle of a fight. And as soon as I did that, and I went outside, and we were still fighting because the issues were deep and could not be solved easily, but the energy changed. And the mystery was hard energy change, not only mine. And so we become constructive, and that was the hint I needed. I persisted with my practices, and within three days, I had the wisdom inside, whatever you call it. My heart opened. My heart really opened. So I thought, this is what people say, heart opening. Wow. And what, a, what, a, what an existence that opened up for us. That was the big event of transformation in my life. There were earlier experiences which I wrote about, which I glorified, but I tell you, the single most important thing in my life of transformation has been this opening of the heart. It was totally unexpected and it opens a new world for you. This world, I pray everyone has the incentive, everyone has the privilege, everyone has the motivation to go through what is needed. And everyone has a companion, lovely companion to do it with, because that was so important for me. I know people do it also by working with themselves, spiritual people are supposed to do that. But in my life, if I did not have the privilege of getting impetus from the women of my life, I could not be transformed. That is the absolute truth. Thank you. So perfect. This is so perfect. Uh, I know very well what does it mean having a, a, a woman decide uh, challenging us about love. This is <laughs> exactly, this is perfect. Come from science to art, from art to science again. <laughs> the circle was perfect. Uh, it was so nice having you with us and uh, many thanks, many thanks. And uh, we are connected by art. Thank you.